party people. Welcome once again to the Party of One podcast, the actual play RPG podcast where the gaming table is always set for two. I am your host as always, Jeff Stormer. This week I am joined by my good friend Devin Preston for a game of Seventh Sea. Seventh Sea is a game of swashbuckling heroes, high seas piracy, and of love, loss, and legend out on an endless ocean. It really brilliantly captures the feel of pirate fiction, and I cannot wait for you to hear the game in action. Before we dive in, though, a real quick reminder that we have a live show coming up Sunday, June 24th at 7 p.m. at Red Caps Corner. That's 3850 Lancaster Avenue in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I hope you can join us. I think it's going to be a really, really fun show, and I cannot wait. You can find more information about that in the show notes. And with all that out of the way, let's throw it over to me in the past so that he can get started with the show. Take it past me. Thanks, future me. This week, I'm sitting down with my good friend, Devin Preston. Devin, thank you so much for coming on Party of One. So happy to be here. So I am so excited this week. This is going to be a very, very good episode. We are playing 7th C, 2nd Edition. I'm ready to do some pirate action. <laughs> so why don't you take a moment and introduce us to your character this week and tell us what he's been up to. All right, this week I am playing uh, Renard Oiseau, a uh, sailor from Montaigne, which is uh, sort of fantasy France in this world. Mm -hmm. uh, Renard has been out uh, exploring the treacherous coastlines of many... Uh, islands that have been recently discovered mm -hmm. with his uh, crew aboard the Lady in the Waves, uh, captained by Captain Bellechance. Mm. Uh, this is a crew of young uh, lovers, dreamers, and poets, and Renard is sort of the lone voice of reason, uh, the ship's quartermaster, keeping track of everything that needs to be maintained on the ship, while the uh, rest of the crew is trying not to fall head over heels into the ocean. So what's the most beautiful thing that you saw while you were, like, while you were, while you were charting the coast, what's the most beautiful and the most beautiful, so while you were charting the coast, what's the most beautiful thing you saw and the most dangerous thing that you survived? Sure. The, uh, the most beautiful thing that I saw was there was this, uh, the island with this mountain crest that formed a, uh, a perfect square mm -hmm. top and uh as the sun set sort of the perfect sphere of the sun right uh coming into contact with the perfect like square hard edges and i just thought it was the most beautiful uh piece of geometry along the coast and what is hap what i will say what you're 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 looking at this beautiful piece of mm -hmm. perfect geometry mm -hmm. everyone else on the crew is watching uh like a coatl, like a winged lizard, like swoop down on the other side of the ship, and you're just like those beautiful angles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow! And yeah. then there's this winged lizard, like right. picking up a dolphin and flying off with it on the other side. Yes, yes. Good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So uh, you've returned home to the town of Queen's Kiss. You return home to the town of Queen's Kiss. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit about your about your hometown. Tell me how it was when it's when you left, and how it is now that you've come back. Now that you've been back a few weeks. Uh, yeah, I think this is like the <laughs> the humble midwestern town mm -hmm. of fantasy France. And yep. I think when I left, it was like a place of uh, good hearted, hard working people. Um, the opening to Beauty and the Beast. Sure. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I'm thinking of, of if something's changed. Uh... So I have a suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it is if it if it if anything has changed. I think it is that uh, you you left. It was a town. It was very much a town that would produce a crew and a ship like the Lady in the Waves. It was a town of poets and dreamers. Mm -hmm. And so like there were a lot of old bookstores and like libraries and things. Yeah. And you've come back and all of those have been replaced with, like, smiths and, you know, billowing smoke and smiths. And it comes back and it's just a very... The the, the art is gone and, like, the, the music in the air has just been replaced with the sound of hammers hitting metal, right? Yeah, and I think it was a place where people, uh... People, it, when I left, it was a, it was a hardworking town of mm -hmm. people who, like, loved the arts and loved sort of each other in their mm -hmm. lives and coming back it's all of the all of the like charm is gone yeah. and it's just the hard work is sort of all that's left <laughs> right yeah i think that's exactly what it's like um you've been back a few weeks 
your crew, they they hit shore leave like it was a musical about sailors <laughs> from the 1940s. Like, <laughs> they hit port and they just, like, jazz hands and, you know, lovers reunited and kissed as the camera swirled around them. And people stood, did, like, the Captain Morgan pose and looked out to the horizon as they charted the... As they charted the the quest to reunite them with the magic item that was their family's birthright, what did you? What have you been up to in the last few weeks? <laughs> I'm still unpacking the ship. You're still unpacking the <laughs> ship. Good. Right. Like, and there's there, like uh, there's a a laundry list of sort of maintenance items mm-hmm. and things I've needed to to order, and uh, of course the captain has request to entirely repaint his quarters, mm-hmm. so I've had to find a a painter to take care of that. So, and, and I think, actually, I think, I think I want to make this a risk. Okay. <laughs> I think there's a risk in, because I think this is, this is a risk that I want, and I want to make this a risk, which is to say that there is meaningful dramatic consequence if you fail, mm-hmm. or rather there's meaningful dramatic consequence that is going to happen to you unless you sort of successfully, heroically kind of evade around it. Great. Which is you are going to attract attention of the people, uh, of the forces that have changed the town, right? Sure. You know, you are, and, and I think it's partially you kind of like hiring painters and maintenance crews, mm-hmm. and also partially just being on, still on the ship. I think that the consequence is you are going to attract attention of the gendarme and of the, the, the personal enforcers of, uh, the scoundrel captain Marcel Beaumarchais, who has sort of, as you've kind of learned in your tiny interactions over the last few weeks, is the the military official that Montaigne and that the the emissaries of the Child King have put here to protect this this beautiful town from outside forces, but in doing so has sort of rotted the the town to its core. Okay. So I'm going to make this a risk, and I'm going to pick a trait and a skill. So the way risks work in 7th C is uh, the first thing I'm going to do is tell you a trait and a skill. And I think this is going to be, would you call this panache? or No, I think I might call it wits, if you're trying to like talk to people and make connections. Maybe okay. even finesse. What do you think? Do you have a- I think that uh, it seems to be... Uh, because the town has changed, mm-hmm. it seems to not be about, like, anything I know about the town, but just, ha- I think it's panache because yeah. I'm sort of coming into um, what feels like a new place. And I think I'm going to call it, I think I'm going to call it empathy more so than, I think the ability to, like, blend into the town, I'm going to call panache and empathy. Great. Is what I'm going to call it. So you're going to count up your ranks in panache and empathy, and you're going to roll that many ten-sided dice. Okay. So how many dice are you rolling? Right? Uh, so I have two in panache and one in empathy. So that's okay. three dice. So you're going to roll three dice. Uh, and you're going to take those dice and you're going to add them together to make tens. Okay. So every ten, every ten is one raise. So I got one ten. Okay. And then a two and a one. So one raise. Okay, so total. you've got one raise. Uh, the consequences that you're dealing with are uh, that... Marcel's forces are going to come hassle you. Sure. And that, um, and I think that's the only consequence is that Marcel and his, Marcel and his forces are going to come hassle you and the crew, right? Mm-hmm. And they're going to, uh, basically, yeah, I think that's the only consequence. I don't think there are any opportunities to come here. Actually, I will say the opportunity is that you can get townspeople on your side, right? This is oh, a real sure, oppor- yeah. This is an opportunity to, to re-ingratiate, re in ingratiate yourself in the town of, of in the town of Queen's Kiss. Mm-hmm. This is a chance to re-ingratiate yourself with your friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's an opportunity and a consequence on the table. You've made your roll. Now you're going to describe your action and spend one or more spend that one raise on one of the following actions. Uh, you can spend it. You can spend it to take an action. Uh, overcome a consequence or take advantage of an opportunity. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, great. So you can either make it so that you don't get hassled or so that people are on your, or so that people, so that it happens so that people are on your side. 
Right. Uh, cool. So, so here's here's what I think happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I uh, sort of I offload everything from the ship and I do my inventory of things that that mm-hmm. need to be replaced, maintenance that needs to be done, and I I head off into town with my my sure. list of uh, things things I need to get, mm-hmm. and I go to a place that sort of used to be uh, like a uh, I'm imagining it as some sort of like, uh, maybe this is silly. I'm imagining it as some sort of cross between like a general store, mm-hmm. but also like a machine shop. Sure. Uh, that used to just sort of outfit people with what they need. Yeah. And as I go in expecting to see uh, my good friend Gerard, mm-hmm. I see that he's been replaced by someone else and that the general store has been gutted and it's all machine I shop. Think he's, and he's been specifically replaced by... Um a guy that you oh you you knew a little bit you know a little bit from your military career and you just sort of know him as uh, Longfinger mm-hmm. because he has this one long finger. <laughs> it's this it's one of those weird military nicknames, mm-hmm. but um, real real pain in the ass was kind of like demoted to sort of you you were there when he was demoted for harassing people underneath him Mm -hmm. you know you were you kind of you were you kind of had a laugh because he was a notorious uh drill master and so when he got when he got demoted it was sort of a a laughing stock for much of the people around you right and here he is sure enough just yelling at the poor minimum wage people trying to scrape by you see him kind of like throw some, throw like a tiny bag of flour at someone, and it goes over their shoulder and shat like blows up. Mm-hmm. And there he is, same as ever. <sighs> well, I should have expected that you'd land somewhere, but I'd hoped it'd be a little further from home, Longfinger. <laughs> no one's called me that in a long time. Because oh, did you know- get it fixed then? No, no one calls me that because they know what would happen if they cross somebody in my position of authority. Can I help you today, old friend? Uh, beaming smile, pass in the list. Uh, absolutely, uh, you can help me outfit my ship and get it back into, uh, ship shape, I believe is the technical term. Oh, you've got such a way with words. It's why I never liked you. So let me ask you. Mm-hmm. Here's here's the moment of crux. Mm-hmm. Do you get your ship in ship shape? Do you uh, avoid causing problems further any any further problems with Marcel and his gang, or do you like this? Is I think I think we we've we've got the action. Now we get to spend the raise. Uh, so I really want to spend my raise with a uh, a route. A rousing speech that wakes the uh, factory workers here okay. sort of out of their sure, sure, sure. slumber. So what happens is he looks over the list and he kind of just starts like chuckling to himself a little bit, like <laughs> you're not getting that. Oh no, there's a ration on that. That's no, no, no. Oh, oh, oh! You have to know about the tariffs that they put on that. Where there's. Sorry, we simply can't do a single thing about uh, anything that you've got here. I'm I'm sorry, old friend, but it looks like you and the ship and your crew are uh, on your own. This uh, there's really nothing I can do about it. You understand? And he throws a glance to two uh, one one guard who is sleeping against the door and one guard that is like picking at his fingernail. And then the guard kind of elbows his friend who's asleep, and they're wearing very, like, classic sort of musketeery, like, breastplate and helmet combos. And he's like, huh, 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 yeah, huh, yeah, we're up. We're good. I, I, I look at the list, and I... A long figure, there's, there's clearly a mistake here. I, I'm... Here it says, I only need... 50 lengths of chain, and I see right over there, you have one of the best chain makers that I have ever met. And, and there's a, mm-hmm. a good friend of mine, sure. uh, Gestalt. <laughs> Gestalt. And, and I think there's a quick flashback of Gestalt, you know, chaining up, uh, like, like making chains that I think, like, 
there was a storm and you see like the people laying out the chains that kept the the winds from pulling away precious things and you know just and just salt is there like in his little cottage looking over this and smiling and now you see him just like pulling at this one length of chain just like yeah <sighs> Uh-huh. And I go down the list and sort of each item, like, you know, uh, I need a length of sail and over mm-hmm. there, uh, you know, it's actually my third cousin who is a wonderful mm-hmm. sail stitcher. Mar- Marguerite, she is a beautiful, a beautiful boatswain. Mm-hmm. You know, she's, she, she's made wonderful, like a history of wonderful sails. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you... I think it's exactly what happens. You point to 15 people with 15 different stories, and everybody's like, yeah, I am great. Why aren't we helping? And Longfinger just kind of sits back and just bites his knuckle real hard and is like, look, I there's nothing I can... One thing... And he kind of just walks into the back and uh, just all throws a hand around you and says, listen... We'll get you. We'll get your ship into. Uh, you know, he nudges you. Ship shape. Uh, I I appreciate it. You know me. I got a sense of humor. Glad someone does. Just salt. <laughs> ship shape. <laughs> ship shape. Uh, we'll get your. We'll get your things in working order. I'm, I I give you my word. It, uh, it says here you need a paint job. Is that correct? It says a uh, blue, green, and silver. Um, don't tell me the captain saw a mermaid again. Yeah, he's requested uh, the the painter in town with the softest heart that that I could find. The the so the the usual. You could have just said the usual, but right? we'll get we'll get it taken care of. <laughs> Thank you. Was it at least an actual mermaid this it time? It was an actual mermaid okay, this time. Good, but do not tell the captain that he's very sensitive. I mean, okay, no, that's fine. But we'll get it taken care of. We will get the ship, and. You know, uh, over the next day or so, it's all after hours. People come by, like, one at a time. Marguerite comes by, like, having sewn it up while during dinner. Like, she drops off the sails, and she's like, it's, it's, you were, you could have been double stitching them. It would, it would have given you a lot more wind resistance, which means that when you're going downwind, trust, it's going to be a lot better for you. Just don't, just don't tell anyone that I was here. And, um, the next risk that comes is you're on and next risk that comes out of the consequence that that you've been dealt is you're on the boat uh you know you've just handed it off describe to me the paint job as it's finished you've got the painter you've got uh Jean-Claude uh Jean-Claude pure heart okay. of the purest heart yes uh, not as a real, not his original name, but he changed it to that sort of a branding decision. <laughs> it was admittedly a very good marketing decision. Mm-hmm. Um, has painted, <laughs> describe to me like the walls of the captain's quarters. Uh, right. So there are all of these, uh, all of these cresting waves mm-hmm. with the, the, uh, uh, you know, like rolling foamy waves and and when you look closely in each of the waves is just like a tiny weeping face (laughs) (laughs) good 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 Mm -hmm. okay so the next risk you're on you've just handed you've just handed jean-claude curehart the money Mm -hmm. uh he has departed uh and you see coming up the docks several figures cloaks and hoods one of whom is carrying an unlit torch. You see, I'm going to say two or three. There's like, I'm going to say about six of them. Okay. Two of them are carrying unlit torches. One of them is carrying a, a big jug of obviously like kerosene and oil. Mm. Uh, swords, kind of, you see a sword kind of like one of the, a big, not, not necessarily like a, a rapier or a dueling sword, just like a big fuck shit up sword. Sure. Strapped to his back, a dueling saber on somebody else's hip. And you see them come to the dock. You see um, a pompously dressed bureaucrat who is making no effort to hide the fact that he is here, despite the fact that he should probably that he is the only one making an effort not to hide the fact that he is here, and he should take the hint. With uh, he's got one of those. He's you know he's got in this beautiful like pink and silver 
and maroon uh, nobles outfits that almost looks a little outdated. Mm -hmm. And he's got the big poofy collar and a big, long, straight mustache. Uh, Obviously, uh, Marcel Beaumarchais. Mm -hmm. And he um, points directly... You watch this happen. He points directly to the lady in the waves. Uh, one of the one of the cloaked figures grabs his hand and like throws it down, and you catch a brief glimpse of the hand that grabs Marcel's, and you see that uh, that index <laughs> finger it's way it's way long. <laughs> and uh, they they kind of like he kind of like grabs him. Marcel slaps long finger like for like don't touch me. You don't touch me. And, like, goes off and starts adjusting, and they start, like, hustling towards the ship, pre-lighting their torches and getting ready to, uh, burn the Lady in the Waves to the ground. Or to the water, pun intended. (laughs) Uh, so that's the situation. What do you do? (laughs) Well, I imagine that... Uh, the folks who have been showing up after hours to help repair the ship have also brought, like, numerous dishes Mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a a, a crate of apples on the boat. Right. There's, uh, there's some books that, that, uh, like, the local, one of the local booksellers has been keeping in her, uh, has been keeping in her basement because they shut down the bookstore. So she brings you some books and she's like, I know how much the crew likes to read. I know they love their adventure stories. <laughs> and so, yeah, there's all sorts of other stuff. Mm-hmm. If you want something on the boat for a dramatic action, just let me know and it'll be... <laughs> uh, uh, it seems like... Uh, um, it seems like my I either have to... Uh, try and like talk to them, mm-hmm. or just try and get out of there with the ship. You got those are your two options. Yeah, um, you could you could also fight your way out, but there's there's a lot of them, and that would be certainly risky. Right. Um. Oh, I know what I do. Oh, yeah. Uh. Oh, by the way, take a hero point for putting yourself. Uh, you your your uh, your virtue is what is your virtue? Uh, my virtue is. Glorious. Uh, if you if I put myself as the center of attention, then uh, every die counts as a raise. Okay, so so you so keep that in mind. Uh, mm-hmm. You could have done that last time, and I forgot about it, but okay. it's fine. I'm grab one of these just to track when I get those. I don't start with any hero points, do I? No. Okay. So what's what's your what's your plan of attack? So I see them uh, coming up the docks and. Uh, I don't know what the ship equivalent of scrapping for parts is, Mm -hmm. but I imagine that that's what they intend here. I I think so. I think they, I think they intend to just like gasoline and light, they, they intend to gasoline and just light the ship, take anything they can take, leave you, leave you and the crew for dead and then kind of round you up all, round you all up under night and kill whoever isn't, kill whoever's not dumb enough to leave town. (laughs) Right. Uh, so I... Uh, I see them coming up the dock. I let them know that their efforts won't be necessary, and my ship is ready for uh, to see the the seas again. And I like cut all the ropes that have it tied to the dock and push off uh, uh, away from the dock, sort of insinuating that mm-hmm. uh, if they if they'd like to make this a battle, it'll be a battle on the sea. Sure. Uh, okay. This is so. This is definitely a risk. This is definitely panache and convince. Cool. Um, yeah. This is definitely panache and convince. Um, this is. Let's see. Um, I am going to put uh, an opportunity on the table, and that is. Uh, that is. There is absolutely. Well, I'm going to put an opp- Yeah, I'm going to put an opportunity on the table. That is, um, as you're saying all of this, the ship is starting to pull away, and you hear from behind them, ever so slightly slurring and off-key, you just hear, There's a woman waiting for me, a woman in the seas. 
I am in love with a mermaid. And you see, like, stumbling back to his <laughs> ship, just in time to see his beautiful new paint job. Uh, Captain Belchance is is coming back, and uh, you can... And the consequence will be... The consequence for this will be um, that you are at sea alone you have that you're that you're on you're on the water alone mm-hmm. um uh the consequence will be that you are you are unequipped to like pot, like run the entire ship by yourself right um the other consequence i will give you is that they are going to basically make it a fight on the water so there's those are the two consequences that there's going to be a fight on the water and that you are in a boat unprepared for that. Right. The opportunity is that Captain Belchance is behind them, and if you can enlist him or get to him or come back for him in a meaningful way, uh, he's, he will be at your back. And still, even inebriated, even after, even on shore leave and inebriated, Captain Belchance has a way with this ship, and he has a way with his crew. Sure. As any great captain would. Oh man! So okay. those are I'm your. So excited! So, <laughs> give me, give me your, uh, give me your panache and convince. Okay, so yeah, two actually, th- I'd call this. Uh, no, I'll call this panache. Okay, or, or wit. Which, which is higher for you? Uh, I've got three in wit, so that's higher. Yeah, take wit. Okay, so uh, that's four all together. All right. Okay. Um. Wow, that's not a super great roll. Uh, I guess that turns into one raise. Okay, is all I have out of that. Got it. Okay. Um, so you can accomplish your action. You can you can successfully kind of cut the boat loose and go to the water. Uh, but that would mean taking on both. That would mean taking them on on the sea by yourself. You can get the attention of Captain Belchance. So Jeff. Yes. Before this happened, I was in the captain's quarters right. looking at the wonderful paint job. Yes. And as I, I heard a noise outside, and as as I uh, a noise from the uh, very stealthy. Uh, burn squad out mm-hmm. here uh and and then as i left the quarters i sort of absent-mindedly grabbed from his nightstand like a favor mm-hmm. like a lock of the mermaid's hair yeah, yeah. Uh, without thinking and as i come to the uh to the stern and i i take in this whole uh everything that you've described mm-hmm. i recall a little maneuver right. that uh captain belchance and i have often uh perfected sure uh this this is called the lover's leap all right and uh i think that i quickly like tie the lock of hair to one of the ropes of the ship Mm -hmm. and throw it out and call for uh the captain to perform the lover's leap in which he (laughs) leaps heart first sure into the sea and grabs the rope i love it and that's how i like to use one by one raise to get my captain you've got the captain you've got the captain (laughs) you're on the water uh the two of you so what i will say so okay that ends they they kind of rush to a nearby boat like one of their one of their uh military vessels they Mm -hmm. rush to it and you can see, like, they've got, it's basically, it's like a, it's like a, a pinnace or like a small, like, blockade runner. So it's small enough that the six of them could conceivably manage it. Mm-hmm. They'll definitely have you outgunned and outmanned. Uh, okay. Um, but, um, the new risk. So that's, that's the situation. You are, you are, you are on your own. The two of you together. Um, what I will, uh, but I will give you a hero point, though. Because your uh, your hubris says if you go back for someone, you get a hero point. Right. So I'll give you a hero point for that. Okay. So, you're on the boat. Uh, we are now going into ship battle. Oh, great. That's exciting. Okay, so you're in, you're in battle. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your... What is your character's action? What are you trying to impart on the world? What is your What is your goal here? Now that you're at, at sea and they're getting they're gearing up to open fire on you. Yeah. Um. Hmm. <laughs> you can fire the cannons. You can man the sails. Uh, you could. Get gear up to gear up to to faint them and and board them after all. 
Right. You could also try and get the attention of the rest of your crew. As I said, uh, Captain Belchance has a way with his crew. I will tell you, uh, if you make, if you, if you take a risk to try and get their attention, Captain Belchance has that, has a connection with his crew that, that, uh, borders on sorceress. I think the, the, the first thing I'd, uh, talk to me about, I'm curious if there's something I can do to intercept their, uh, uh, trying to get their ship. I imagine I've got the head start getting yeah. away from the dock, so if there's, maybe I, like, throw, maybe I get, like, a hatchet mm-hmm. and throw it, you know, so that you it, like, abso- sticks in the anchor and they, like, can't hoist the anchor. Uh, what you could do is throw a hatchet or a knife or something. You've got blades on board, for uh-huh. sure. You yeah, can throw they're, one. They're not, none of them have been used. <laughs> no. They're all well-polished, yeah. but have not seen much action. Uh, you could actually <laughs> throw, uh, this would be spectacular. And, uh, this would be very good. What you could do is throw, you could cut, you could cut their ship loose and it would float away. The water oh, is choppy yeah. enough that it would, it would take them effort and they're mm. clearly not dressed for like jumping onto their ship. And the, the, the winds, the winds in this night are wicked enough that it would like push this, put that the second that rope would come loose, it would require a jump. It would require a lover's leap. Right. So and you, they're fighters, not lovers. They are fighters, not lovers. So you could absolutely do that. Is that what you want to do? Yeah, I think that maybe in our travels we've encountered a certain warrior princess and mm-hmm. have some strange, like, circular blade. Yeah, It's really good for, sure. for throwing and severing several ropes at once. I think it's fantastic. All right. All right, so that's the risk. The risk is this is going to be a finesse and aim roll. Okay. So we've got our approach, which is aim and finesse. Uh, I'm going to tell you what the consequences and opportunities are. The consequences of this are uh, that they are going to, if their ship goes, if they are not going to, they are going to board your ship and they are going to push this into a fight. And furthermore, uh, if this, furthermore, yeah, it's that. And I will put the... That's going to be the one consequence, is that they will they will turn their attention to you if you push their ship away. They, so there will be no escaping this fight unless you spend a raise to avoid it. Okay. So go ahead and make your roll, and then we'll see what raises you get and what actions you take. Okay, so I got... I rolled five dice, and I got two raises. Okay. So you can uh, choose to complete your action. You can choose to remove that consequence... And I will give you the opportunity to, uh, like I said, the captain has this wonderful semi-sorceress connection, maybe due to the fact that he has uh, loved a mermaid or two in his time. Uh, he has this, his voice has this energy to the people that have been around him. To those with a heart for poetry and exploration, they can hear his voice Near or far. Mm-hmm. So you have the opportunity to buy time for him to call your crew and get them, maybe not directly into the fray, but like coming up from behind. So you've got the opportunity to call your crew. Okay. You've got the obstacle, which is they are going to board your ship. And the action of successfully slicing through free the, uh, slicing free their ship. Right. What two things do you want to do? Um, I... I definitely want to rouse the crew. Okay. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll take the, uh... The song of the crew Mm -hmm. and the, uh, slicing of the ropes. Okay, so yeah. Uh, what happens next is, um... Perfect, I love it. So what happens is you throw, you throw the, the, you throw the disc... It slices, the ship immediately bucks back and starts floating away. Uh, one of them, yeah, I'm going to say Longfinger, because because it's always good for a bad guy to get a little comeuppance, runs and jumps into the water and just does not jump far enough face first into muddy, shallow water. And it's just, <laughs> oh, no! Has to, like, swim through the mud to get back to the shore. Mm-hmm. It is not in any position to, like, meaningfully fight. But there's still five of them, and they start, like, 
throwing. They grab some hooks and and rope Ooh, from like yeah. around the from around just around the docks, mm-hmm. and they start hooking and they start boarding your ship. Mm-hmm. But as you do that, um, Belchance looks to this and just yells, "My crew to me!" And you see like. <laughs> You see, on the far end of the docks, there's, like, a dockside bar mm. where, you know, people come in, immediately coming in. It's called the First Rest because it is the first place that you go after, you go after your, your adventures. It's a whole tradition in Queen's Kiss. Mm-hmm. Uh, two guys stumble out of there d- deep in the bag, right? Mm-hmm. Swords in hand, and they're just... And they point, and you see three more from way up the road come running and every one of them is just beaming with 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 pure bravery and all of the 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 strength of a pirate right Mm -hmm. and they're just burning their way down these docks all armed with their their dueling sabers and it will there's going to be a risk uh before actually i'm going to make it an opportunity that you can buy time in the next risk that i throw out to you okay uh, that is... Okay, so now we're in a fight. Great. Uh, describe to me where on the ship and give... Set the, like, set the scene for me on the ship. Like, in the open area of the ship. What's around? What are the set... The the, the props that are gonna be used? Okay, um... There's... Uh... So there's, like, a, a long deck with the, uh... Sort of, like, raised area... There's a long deck with a raised area where the captain is, like, the bridge. Uh, and then there, <laughs> I imagine that this uh, ship has, like, lots of, mm-hmm. not just, like, one carving at the front, like, one ornament, but, like, lots of ornaments around the side. So there's mm-hmm. also lots of uh, sort of ledges around the edge um there uh as you said there's like there's lots of books and lots of uh dishes out there Mm -hmm. are long tables yep um and lots of small i guess small blades Mm -hmm. we don't have long blades but there's all sorts of uh different like knives um and like tools uh and then i imagine that like the because i i've had to come up with lots of clever ways to sort of run this ship yeah right uh, single-handedly or or with uh without as much help as i would like because these these guys keep falling in and out of love so there's also like lots of winches and gear yeah, like right. pulley systems going on I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, so we are now in a fight with what is called a Brute Squad. Oh no! Uh, There are five of them, so the Brute Squad has a strength of five. Okay. So, uh, what is now going to happen is you are going to announce, uh, this is the fight. They've all kind of climbed up, they've pulled out their big honking swords, um, and they... Uh, so you're going to tell me, like, how you fight them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the consequence is going to be you're going to take wounds equal to the strength of the squad, which is okay. five, because there are five of them. Okay. Uh, I will say you will end up taking uh, three wounds, because I think two of them will be directed to Belchamps. Okay. So tell me tell me how you fight them off. And uh, I will give you the opportunity that, like, you can buy time until your crew... Uh, dramatically make their entrance, and then you're able to even the odds in a very dramatic fashion. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I think the first thing I want to do is, as they're... So, as they're... Uh, they, like, throw the hooks and start to, like, climb up mm-hmm. the ropes to get to the ship, and instead of going to that point of attack, which I think is what they would expect, mm-hmm. I instead want to... I, like, run down into the bowels of the ship... And I imagine that there's a trap door underneath, yeah. like, where they would be coming up. Right. And I want to spring up underneath that and surprise That's them and brilliant. hopefully, like, knock some of them off balance or maybe over the side. That's brilliant. Uh, I'm going to call that uh, Wits and Warfare. Cool. I think. Cool. 
Yeah, there's, unless you think there's something you'd rather you, you think would be a better fit there. I think Wits and Warfare makes sense. Yeah, right? that's good. Yeah, cool. So what's your what's your how many dice are you rolling here? Uh, five dice. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, man. Uh, whew, woof. All right. Uh, that's one raise. Okay. Okay. So uh, what happens then is you automatically reduce. You automatically reduce their strength by one. Um, okay. And what happens to the one guy that you take out? Uh, or do you not take out anybody and this just buys time until your crew shows up? I think I definitely want to take out the okay. guy that had the fuel. Okay, yeah. So I think he... What happens is I think you hit him. Uh, the fuel like spills onto him and one of the other guys with a lit torch stumbles. Oh no! It hits him on the, ca- it hits him on the cape. <laughs> Because this is this is pirate fiction, so right. it's PG thirteen. <laughs> Hits him on the cape, and he does the very cinematic man on fire, three steps staggered, falls over the edge of the ship into the water. Wilhelm scream. It is perfectly cinematic. Awesome. Stunt double got paid yeah. very well that day. Um and I think um so what happens then is before your crew shows up. Uh, you take two wound. Okay. And Belchance takes two wound as well. There's there's simply more of you than there are there's simply more of them than there are of you, and right. they just start pummeling. I think Belchance manages to like di- dramatically disarm the one with the big fuck shit up sword, but uh-huh. he still gets like uppercutted in the jaw, spits blood all over the ship, and is like, Well, we'll have to clean this up later. My lady will not be happy with the <laughs> with a with a blood stained vessel. Mm-hmm. And they just start like uh, I think one of them throws his hood over your head and starts, like, choking you with it a little bit. And, yeah, so you guys get beat up a little bit. And then we start the fight over. Uh, so, uh, help me out with taking wounds. Yeah. Somebody's definitely getting smashed with a mirror. Yes. So, now it's going to be their turn, uh... Which means you're going to take, I'm going to say, you're going to take three wounds, and okay. Belchance is going to take one. Because okay. we split the four, we split the strength of the brute squad, which is four, because there are four guys remaining. Between the two of you, I'm going to have one go to him, three go to you. Okay. So what happens with wounds is you have a death spiral on your character sheet. Right. Every time you take a wound, you're going to advance that death spiral by, uh, by one. Okay. Every time you hit one of your uh, drum, you hit one of the star-shaped boxes on your character sheet. Mm-hmm. That is taking a dramatic wound. Okay. Yes, that is taking a dramatic wound. That alters the way gameplay works. Things Got are going it. to happen when you take dramatic wounds. Okay. For now, you have not taken any dramatic wounds yet. But right. uh, so you're pretty beat up. Uh, your crew has started to like climb on board. The risk is still you're going to take four wounds between the two of you. After this, your crew will be in the fight, and they will probably be able to uh, f- to fight alongside you. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you do? Right, so... Uh... There's a hood on your head, you're mm-hmm. being choked out. Yeah. Uh, one dude is on fire and fell off the ship. Four more are, I think, that dude's choking you. Another dude is like trying to pick up like the torch that burned his friend and start to turn it on the ship and uh Belchance is in a fist fight with the other two. I uh, think one of them has moved over to Belchance from you. Great. Okay. So as the I, as the crew is like boarding the ship, I meet eyes with Belchance mm-hmm. and I sort of see him taking this big breath of of air, uh, seeing, you know, the faces of his friends coming over the, the sides of the ship. And, uh, we lock eyes and we sort of see, we have this agreement of like, right, we know what to do yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he sort of leaps into action, I think, of, you know, with this very flourishing sword play while mm-hmm. also like directing traffic. Right, yeah. And I take the guy who's sort of around my neck and just drag him down down below with me yeah okay sort of to to you know go to my uh place of comfort and so i think i've got this guy around the neck and then mm-hmm. i'm dragging him around the ship and just like knocking him into things yeah. in the okay. dark i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you a bonus die for that because okay. that's very good um <laughs> 
I'll give you a bonus die for, like, smashing him into things, and I'm going to call that a brawn and brawl. Great, okay. So how many dice is that? That's three plus the one bonus die. Okay. So that's four dice. Roll that and tell me what you get. Uh, okay, here we go. This is good. I got two raises. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to also roll for Belchance. I'm going to give him four dice total, two brawn and two brawl. And I'll give these to you as well. That's um, two more raises. You get four raises. So you oh, actually, wow. uh, you take, describe taking this guy out and the other guy. Describe taking the rest of this this squad out. <laughs> um, describe your dramatic victory. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, I imagine, like, first, like, so this guy's around my neck, and I just, uh, yeah, go, go right down the way I came, like, right back down the trap door, and I'm dragging him through, uh, we go through the galley, and he's mm-hmm. just hitting his head, like, all over the place, and finally, the last thing I do is sort of come, uh, and in a final flourish, like, he hits his head mm-hmm. on a low ceiling, I duck, flip him over my back, and he just lands on, like, one of the cots, the yeah. rest soldiers. And he's just out. <laughs> just out cold. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, uh, above deck, again, uh, Belchance is directing traffic with these uh, beautiful blade flourishes. And uh, the <laughs> crew is coming up the side of the board, all with, like, uh, gorgeous flowing hair that's just, like, whipping mm-hmm. around. And uh, mm-hmm. the mustache gets trimmed of course Mm -hmm. and i think that marcel uh beaumarchais gets tied to the mast okay and like a lovely uh coral number he's not there because he he's he left he's gonna be there in the big climax and momentarily great okay okay um but somebody does somebody gets tied yeah i think i think somebody else gets tied up probably like upside down Mm -hmm. um yeah, and there's lots of <laughs> sort of. I imagine it is the 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 outfits and the armor gets totally uh, disheveled. The armor gets strewn. Um, the the brute squad mm-hmm. uh, ends up looking very disheveled and sort of bruised, but not very bloodied. <laughs> I imagine there's a cacophony of pithy one-liners as mm-hmm. everyone's trying to get in yep. their one-liner at the same yep. time and it's yep. just like complete garbage <laughs> just like a, a a round of like haha you thought i was haha you thought i was haha you thought i was <laughs> so um perfect everything i run some numbers yeah so uh so you so yeah your group has successfully like you kind of come up above deck just in time to see like every to see like you've you've saved the day. You've stopped these guys from burning the boat. Uh, somebody has very dramatically grabbed a mop and wiped up that blood and oil. Um, <laughs> and but as that happens, you hear from the docks attacking the gendarme. My word, how unbearably roguish of you. And you look, and Marcel is there, looking ever so, looking looking so fine. Suddenly, the, the noble's outfit, it half makes sense. You know that it was half just because, like, he's never seen outside of his, you know, appearances matter. Mm-hmm. But you, like, he is there with a lot of people. Okay. There's about to be a big brawl that happens. Oh no. Uh he has brought about a dozen uh armed the the rest of the gendarme. He's brought the rest of the mil- the, the town guard. Right. And he's pointing at you. The town has gathered around the docks and are shocked to see that you've been like that you've been up to this, right? Because <gasps> you're like the favorite side. Right, yeah. And you understand that this has been a trap all along. No! He knew that you were going to do this. He knew you were going to win and wanted to get you in front of everyone attacking the police. And you see Sergeant Crux, a mercenary. Uh, a mercenary, a mercenary sergeant, old and bitter. 
you know, thick and muscular, massive. Mm-hmm. A strength of five what I, is what I will say. So he's going to be rolling five up to five dice okay. against you yeah. in combat. Uh, about a dozen soldiers and Bar- and Beaumarchais himself right. have all gathered and they're like, well, now we shall take all of you in and arrest you finally at last. You're playing on the wonderful, the, the town of commerce of Queen's Kiss. And you see people roll their eyes. Right. And they start they start approaching the ship. Your crew leaps down to uh, to battle them off. To battle them off. And what I will say is that your crew perfectly matches the brute squad of ten. <laughs> and so like that's the the it's it's just you, uh, Belchamp, who I'm also gonna say is a strength five. That check that makes it sense. Uh, it's you, Belchamp, Crux, and Beaumarchais. Pick okay. some good names. Yeah, man. Episode. Um, and as you jump down, here's where the climax gets wild. Uh, it is the first exchange of the, of the fight. And I'm going to present you with an opportunity. Okay. Um, the first exchange of the fight is you are going to, you can reduce, is you can choose to whether to fight off, uh, you can choose to fight off Crux or Beaumarchais, however you choose to fight them off. Uh, the consequence is that the other person is, and, um, Beaumarchais will take, or Belchance will take the other. The consequence is they're both going to make attacks and deal wounds to you. Um, and then there's an opportunity, which is, let me ask you a question. What does her song sound like? Uh, The Mermaid? Yeah. What did, what did it sound like when you heard it? The one time, the one time that it was really a mermaid. <laughs> um, I think that for Renard, it was the one when he heard the mermaid song. Mermaid song. It was the one time that he felt like mm. he was really part of this crew. Okay, and it was the one time that he understood beauty. I love it. That's perfect. <laughs> so. You feel, you don't hear anything, is what I'll say. The mm-hmm. opportunity is you don't hear anything. Mm-hmm. But in your heart, you feel this, like, bolstered bravery from far off in the, like, this brief glimmer of, like, poetry hits mm. your heart. Mm. And you're like, she's she's got to be close. This is at night, right? Yeah. Can it be that there's, like, a, a, a full moon? Yes. And I just, like, linger on the beauty of the moon <laughs> and, for a strange amount of time. And, for, and in your in your eyes, you're just like, oh, no. I know exactly <laughs> what that means. So the opportunity is that the mermaid is close. Okay. And that you can buy the time for the mermaid to arrive and really make, really kick things up. Great. Uh, so uh, give me your action. Give me your, your, your approach and roll your dice. Uh... I'm going to describe something. Yeah. Feel free to, you know, obviously uh, Here's, inter- interrupt it. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a little... Uh, I ha- In this moment... See, so I've I've defended successfully defended my ship with yep. my glorious crew, and I see that the battle is actually happening on the the back on the docks. Mm-hmm. And I had this small uh, moment of recollection of this little scene plays out in my mind of this really uh, wonderful, adamant... Uh, uh, cannon, uh, cannon repair person mm-hmm. who had looked at one of my cannons and I had assured them that it was in perfect working yeah, condition. Yeah, yeah, they were yeah, like, yeah. no, 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 no. It's really, it needs, you don't understand. And so, and they've like re-outfitted the ship with the cannon. And on the docks, I see the old cannon, which mm-hmm. they had told me was just completely inadequate. Mm-hmm. But, but I know, you know it's fine. is in completely working order. And I want to, like, swoop down and sort of, like, what to the untrained eye might look like a pile of rubble yep. I know is, like, hiding a cannon. Okay. And I want to just, like, cannonball uh-huh. one of the dudes. I'm going to call that finesse and warfare. Okay. <laughs> finesse and warfare. And take a, just take a hero point for that. <laughs> Go ahead and just have one, because that's fantastic. Oh, in fact, I can use, uh, I can use one of my, like, th- my advantages here. Mm-hmm. Uh... I'll go ahead and, like, turn that hero point back around and spend it on, uh, handy. Okay. Which means maybe it has a, a few things that I need to do yep. to get it into working order again. Okay. But with my quartermaster knowledge, I can get that back where it needs to be. 
Uh, you said finesse and warfare? Yeah. That's six dice. Good. So uh, how, so you can take that opportunity or you can deal wounds to your, to your enemies. Okay. Um, so I have two raises. Three raises. Six, six, and two is 14. Right. So 14 plus 7 is 21, so that's two raises. But I don't have a way to get there with the dice. Oh, yeah, but it's... it's oh, it doesn't matter? Yeah, okay. call right. that, yeah. Oh, okay, great. So there's three raises. You got three raises. Um, and... Yeah, so I, I want to take... <laughs> okay, so what I'll say is if you deal wounds, if you, if you, if you mm-hmm. attempt to deal wounds to... Uh, if you deal wounds to Beaumarchais and Crux, it'll deal do wounds to both of them because you're shooting a cannon at the dock and they're right. both going to get hecked up. Right. So I have to pick one of those two options? Uh, for these? No. Um, you, can, you, can, you can use one point to activate the opportunity if you'd like. You can spend points to avoid wound, to avoid, uh, avoid their, no, they're going to take an attack on you. That's when you'll avoid. Um, you will spend, you'll deal wounds or take the opportunity. Okay. Um, I think that... Let's go ahead and start with the wound. Okay. So you're, so you're dealing two wounds or three wounds? Um, so you've got three raises. Right. Um, can I do two wounds and the opportunity? Yes. Great. Absolutely. So that's what we'll do. Okay, so they're both going to take two wounds. Yeah. Great. They're both going to take two wounds, which is great. Um. Yeah, they both take two wounds. Uh, Beaumarche cowers. <laughs> not exact. He's got one strength left. He's not. He'll he'll try and like uh, argue against you, but it's not going to be the most effective thing. Mm-hmm. And what I'm going to do right now is just roll. Uh, but. Crux like takes it like his thing like I, th- I think uh, a punk of wood ledges and like slams into his shoulder and he just rips it out and blood is just pouring and he just like cracks his shoulder like chuk, chuk, and he's like I'm and he kind of shrugs it off. This man has taken a cannon and is now coming towards you. Right. Um, I'm gonna briefly roll just to see where our fight is with our guys. That's 8, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 26. That's two raises. Uh, two raises. 6, 36, 46. Uh, 46, 50, 60. So you've got your team's got six raises. Okay. The other team. Actually, I actually just have 10 dice. I can just roll all of them at once and make this a little faster. Uh, and. 20, 30. Yeah, your team, your team is taking a bit of a beating. They've lost four. Uh, four people have been, like, disarmed, knocked into the water, etc. Right. Your crew has uh, six out of ten. Their crew has four out of ten. So the advantage, the advantage is on your crew. Great. You are running through their brute squad. Great. Um, uh, I will say... Belchance, uh, Barmoche tries to run, and Belchance, because I don't feel like rolling another action that's not you, because you're the star of this story, Belchance, uh, capture, like, puts a sword to Beaumarche, and those two are out. Now it's just you and Crux. Okay. Except Crux is very large, and is going to try and attack you now. Great. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to give his attack, uh, he's gonna roll five dice against you for now. Um, and you'll describe your approach, describe your action on how you, uh, reverse it against him. Okay. Uh, the concept, his action is going to be to try and deal you wounds. He gets one raise. Uh, he's going to deal you one wound. Okay. Take a wound. Cool. What's your action in response? Uh. (laughs) So... (laughs) I, um, so he takes a cannonball, uh, shrugs it off, mm-hmm. and, uh, 
I imagine him coming, just coming at me with this meaty hook, Mm -hmm. you know, hitting me right in the gut. And I want to take it Mm -hmm. and use the momentum to flee into the crowd. (laughs) That's fucking... Take that, do, do you get? Can you get another hero point for for doing that? Because I think that's your. I think that's your uh, glorious. Is putting your no. That's not your glorious. No, it's the opposite. Well, then take a hero. I'll, give, I'll take a hero point anyway. I'm generous. <laughs> um, okay, so make your. I'm going to call that 100 percent wits and high. <laughs> what I'm going to call yep. that. Uh. One raise. Okay. Um, the consequence. So the consequence here is you're going to take one wound, uh, which I think you've already marked. But I okay. Just I I quite I got that slightly wrong. The consequence here is you're going to take one room one wound. The action here is you're going to blend into the crowd and get the jump on him, which is going to change the situation and let you make a surprise attack against him. Cool. Uh, which I will give you some at least a few some bonus dice on. Great. Um, and. There's no opportunity. So those are your two options. Do you take do you, do you take the wound or do you uh, do you blend into the crowd or do you avoid the wound? Uh, I blend into the crowd. Okay, yeah, cool. I take the wound, but I'm yeah, cool. Among the people, he now. is going to. So I'm going to make give him an action to try and pursue. And I think you. again, there's a there's like a look with shots of like <laughs> you got this, and uh, <laughs> you took the opportunity. So let's describe exactly what happens there. Uh, now you hear the singing. Okay. Right? She is present on the scene. You don't right. see her, but you hear you hear just the most melodic, like, echoing sound fills the area, and everyone looks to the moon and the wind. You smell the salt. You smell the salt mm-hmm. air. You're kind of used to it. It kind of means nothing to you, but you smell it for the first time. Mm-hmm. And you it's there's this green, it's almost the Aurora Borealis. Like you just see an a glow in the air, and she is she is present. And uh, everyone is just sort of, like, slowed down. And I am going to make that a roll against our friend Crux. I'm going to make that quite a big roll, because she's a powerful mermaid. Uh, Two. Three. Three. Yeah. She, uh, Crux... A tear runs down, his, and, and, and there is a vision of a young crux on the hull of a, like, standing on the hull, or on the, the, the bow of a ship, you know, on the, like, Titanic style, Luke's doing that Luke Skywalker one leg up, staring into the horizon and saying, like, I'm gonna fight for a cause one day. I'm not just gonna end up another mercenary. <laughs> and it, it saps his strength as it deals him three woo. <laughs> reducing his strength dramatically but he is now filled with an anger and rushes you tearing through the crowd with all of his strength so i'm now going to roll five dice as this is everything he has left to try and like find you how do you counterattack him to deal him the wounds the consequence here is you are going to take the consequence here is you are going to take uh let's see Nine plus thirteen is twenty-two. You're going to take one wound, and um, he's going to basically like isolate the two of you away from the mermaid song, which I think has stopped the fight between your crew and the brutes. Everyone has just stopped in hearing this like hypnotic melody. Um. <laughs> uh, I think that I want to. I. I go through the i work my i work my way through the crowd and i'm ahead of him and i mm-hmm. think he's coming down and i i uh i want to like scamper up a low rooftop mm-hmm. and get uh you know there's a a small little uh sort of uh there's a small little building there that the person that the dock workers okay. sort of come in yeah. and out of and i scamper on top of that and give me give me brawn or finesse whichever is higher plus athletics to, to okay. tackle him basically okay and t- uh, give me two give me two bonus dice to that for for being particularly particularly cunning and getting the drop on him cool uh, that's a 10 uh, is that a- okay so oh and you said two bonus yeah give me two bonus dice okay one for getting the drop on him and one for for uh, evading him so far 
and for, for jumping from a height. Cool. So, yeah, that's three successes. Okay. Do you want to deal him three wound, or do you want to avoid the wound coming your way and deal him two wound? Uh, I think I want to avoid. Okay. To get well, up there. Let me yeah. let me uh, point something out on your character sheet. You're mm-hmm. at four wound right now, which right. means your next wound is a dramatic one. Uh-huh. And your first dramatic wound on the death spiral gives you one bonus dice to all actions, to all future risks until you heal. Right. So this is a, this. It might actually behoove you to take this wound and just be, and get that get that bonus dice onto every action you roll. This is a, a wound that drives you to be better and fight harder. Well, I'm going to get the wound either way. I just want to make sure I get like up to. The oh, roof. got it, got it, got it. Okay, yeah. It seems like the difference between whether he's able to pin me before I get I up got there it. or whether um, I can get up there. I'll say you can do that and still you can do yeah. Okay, I'll say that, so. Then I'll give, have you deal him three wound. Uh, okay. Take that. Take take the wound yourself. Got it. He's pretty weak. He's going to, um, he's going to try, he's going to pull out, and now I'm going to pull out a special piece of wool, a special wool. He's going to pull out a pistol. (gasps) A pistol or musket in the hands of a villain is serious danger. They're relatively easy to use and their effects are devastating. Uh, so he's going to take a shot at you. He's only got two dice. Okay. But, um... He is going to take a shot at you, and he gets no raises. I don't know what happens if you get no raises. I think it just... Okay, yeah, I think you can just end this. He takes a shot. He's aim. He's taking aim at you, is what I'll say. Uh-huh. What do you do to turn the situation around? Cool, so, so the way I see this, right, is that, like, he was... Hustling through the crowd, and right, I got yeah. up on this rooftop, and he pulls out this pistol, and I'm able to drop so that yeah. he doesn't have a clear shot. Right? Yeah. So what do you do to what do you do to finally take him out? He's close. If you can deal him two wounds, you've you've saved the day. Beaumarche is cowering in a corner, and we can we can uh, be yeah. the hero once and for all. So uh, I want to use my favorite hero advantage in this game, all right. and it's a it's a move called Psst, over here. Okay, uh, so, I'm listening. Uh, I spend one hero point, and I can take one person out of a situation. Okay, describe how you lure them over here. Describe how you lure him. Uh, so yeah, I think that there's like a skylight window, yeah. and I drop into the building. And inside of this building, there's a little uh, housing for like a big boom arm that they probably use to pull things right. on and yeah. off the ship. So I'm able to, you know, he's a classic like, oh, which way did he go? And I pssst over mm-hmm. here, and he turns, and just. Boom! And he's right out. with this boom arm, <laughs> and I think that's I think that's the last thing that we see. And I'm going to ask you. Um, well, I think you come back to the docks. The mermaid is there, sitting atop a wave, just about to leave. She has no name to give. Mm. She is simply the mermaid. Mm-hmm. What one thing do you say to her before she departs? I uh, I look out to the wave. And I see her. Here's what I'll say mm-hmm. to make this to really complicate the situation. Um, standing on the wave with her is Bellechance. Uh huh. And they're just like looking back, and uh, he's gonna, he's gone. Like they're going. Yeah. They, this is he is finally reunited with his love and is heading to sea. I yeah. I tell her. I think that I tell the two of them that. I, I have failed, and this town that I have left behind no longer deserves the the beautiful souls of my crew. Take them to somewhere that still believes in beauty and love. I I, I think um, she opens her mouth and simply what you hear is simply the crash of wave, and it is. You know, the, the, the sounds of the ocean when she opens her mouth. Mm. And Belchance just says, I think our closing beat. Because I'm going to ask you for one thing, but I think he says, I think, Renard, I, my, the, where, where we go, the crew does not follow. The crew needs someone to take, the crew needs someone to do what you said and take them to a place that behooves them. They need someone that knows the ship better than anyone else that they could turn to. Have you ever thought about being a captain? 
And I think that's gay. Right? <laughs> so I have a follow up question. Yeah. Um, weeks later, how is the town changed? How is the town changed for the better, but still does not resemble what the town? You know, it's it does it has not gone back to what it was. Mm-hmm. How has it still nonetheless changed in the weeks when when the lady in the waves departs once again? What mm-hmm. is diff- What is the third way that the town looks? The town has the uh, the town has begun to tell stories again, mm-hmm. and the there was a certain magic in the mermaid song, and people are finding that everyone who was on the dock like the whole town was there yeah but everyone saw something different happen that's so good that's beautiful and so yeah that's that's perfect and i think the town i think the town in the years that would follow the town of queen's kiss would become known as this strange artistic movement all centered around this all centered around this wonderful mermaid and all different, like, vastly different artistic interpretations all stem from this this one town at this one moment. And the last thing that we see is the lady on the waves depart. And people wave, and you look out at the home that you left behind, and you look out to the waves, to the home that you have now embraced. And that's game. And I think a flag unfurls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With the sun setting over a, a square rock. Yep. Good. I'm I'm so happy that that came back. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Devin, thank you so much for playing this game. This was great. Absolutely. I'm so happy. Yeah, this was uh, a lot of fun. So real quick, before we wrap up, where can uh-huh. people find you online? Uh, I'm on Twitter, uh, uh, at Dev Presto, D-E-V Presto, like a magic trick. Uh, I'm on there talking about games and talking about performance and theater. Um... Yeah. Cool. Uh, Well, I'm going to throw it over to me in the future so that he can wrap up with the show. Take it, future me. Thanks, past me. And thanks again to Devin for coming on to the show. That game fucking ruled. Be sure to follow Devin on Twitter at DevPresto. He's good people. He's somebody that you should know when he's working on a lot of interesting things. I like him a lot. Hi, Devin. And be sure to check the show notes for more information about John Wick 7th C 2nd Edition. Like I said, it's a really cool game setting. The whole kit and caboodle. It's awesome. I really like it. You should check it out. Then while you're on Twitter, follow us at Party of One Pod, then slide on over to Facebook and like the show at Facebook.com slash Party of One Podcast. Then head over to bit.ly slash Party of One Discord to join us on Discord and talk about the show, professional wrestling, role-playing games, you know, all of the stuff that people like to talk about. If you enjoyed the show, consider leaving us a nice iTunes review, a social media shout-out, or a word-of-mouth recommendation. Any of those things help new listeners find the show, which helps us do bigger, better, and cooler things. You can also consider backing us on Patreon at patreon.com slash party of one podcast. Patreon backers get access to bonus materials, mini podcasts, and interviews. And Patreon dollars help pay for equipment fees, hosting costs, convention appearances, live shows like the one that we have on June 24th at 7 p.m. Red Caps Corner. That's 3850 Lancaster Avenue. I hope you'll make it. Uh, all kind of all that stuff gets paid for by the Patreon, which you can find at patreon.com slash party of one podcast. If you listened to the show just now and thought, dang, I really wish I had like another 45 minutes to an hour of hanging out with Jeff, ideally with one other person as they work on a thing and I just kind of sit there and listen, well, then you should check out All My Fantasy Children. All My Fantasy Children is a character creation, storytelling, and world building podcast powered by you. Each week we take a listener prompt and spin it into a fantasy tale, populating a shared universe one character at a time. New episodes drop every Friday at allmyfantasychildren.com. Party of One is, as always, produced and edited by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. All music for the show comes from the song Infinite Lives by Megaran, featuring the D&D Sluggers. If you're interested in coming onto the show, whether you are a podcaster, game designer, professional wrestler, comedian, actor, writer, musician, kaiju, financial guru, or you just love a good role-playing game, you should email me at partyofonepodcast at gmail.com. And that's it for me. Until next time, thank you so much for listening. Remember to fight the forces of fascism every single day. Remember that self-love and self-care are radical and defiant acts of resistance, and as always, party on, everybody. Party on, everybody.